The purpose of this video is to show you how to solder a passive crossover for a loudspeaker. Especially if you have purchased one of my bolt plans, this will be a good video to watch if you have no or limited experience with soldering crossover components to a board. By the way, I have many loudspeaker projects on my channel and most of them have comprehensive build plans available for purchase on my website at very reasonable prices. If you are up for some DIY, then you can really build yourself an excellent high quality speaker set that will last you many, many years into the future. Go check it out on my website at soundblab.net or click the link in the description box. Firstly, I want to tell you a bit more about crossovers, the different components that typically make them up and how to read a schematic circuit diagram of a typical crossover design. I'm not going to go into the detail of what each component does or its function in the crossover. That will perhaps be for another video and is much too complex to discuss for the purpose of this video. If you would be interested in a video like that, please leave a comment below to let me know. This is a typical but simple crossover schematic circuit diagram. In this particular case, that of a typical second order crossover with a resistor to bring the tweeter level down since they are generally more sensitive than a mid-range driver or a mid-woofer. The circuit diagram starts off on the left with a power source. This indicates the connection of the crossover to the power source or the amplifier via the binding posts and the speaker cable between the amp and the binding posts. Since this is a two-way crossover, this means we have a tweeter and a woofer in our loudspeaker cabinet. The circuit splits into two sections. The upper section is connected to the tweeter and the lower section connected to the woofer. Both are typically indicated with this symbol with the words tweeter or woofer as reference. If we had a three or four-way crossover, you would also see more drivers with the words mid-range or mid-woofer for example. In between the power source and the drivers, we have the crossover components. All the components are connected together with lines, which indicate the component leads and physical wires that bind them all together. A resistor is indicated on the circuit diagram by any of these symbols, and in real life, this is what a resistor would look like. Capacitors are indicated with this symbol. They look like this and come in many different sizes. Inductors or coils are indicated with this symbol and can come in various sizes and shapes or types. For example, here we have an air coil. This is a steel laminate coil. And this is an iron core coil. There are other types, but they are not that common, so I'm not going to mention them here to keep things simple. Another important symbol on the circuit diagram is that of ground, and it simply indicates that all ground points are connected together. This simplifies the circuit diagram schematic and avoids many lines crossing each other. None of these three types of components have any polarity, where it does not have a positive or negative orientation in the circuit. Whether you connect them this way or that way, it does not matter. Coils or inductors, however, do generate a magnetic field, and how we orientate them on the board in relation to each other does matter. This illustration will give you a good idea of what to do and not to do. Always remember that distance between coils are your friend, otherwise they can influence each other and alter the desired value as a result of magnetic field disturbance between the two coils. This orientation is the best way to place coils if they can only go next to each other, but still try and put as much space in between them as possible. The components in the circuit diagram are usually numbered, a resistor with the letter R and a number next to it, usually starting with 1 and then 2 and so on depending on the number of resistors in the circuit diagram. Resistors are measured in ohms. The same goes for capacitors with the letter C, measured in microfarads, and coils or inductors with the letter L, measured in millihenry. The value of that component is then also indicated under or next to the component number with the appropriate measuring symbol next to it. Now that you know a bit more about crossovers, let's use this crossover diagram to build a crossover on a board using two different solutions. Typically, I will get all the parts together and start arranging them in various ways to see which configuration works best. Normally, this will be the solution that I feel is the most compact in size and fits the space in which the crossover must go into the enclosure. As I position the components, I try to imagine how they will connect together according to the circuit diagram. 
For this two-way crossover, I settled on this basic layout. This determines the board size I must cut for all the components to fit. In this case, it is 13 by 10 centimeters. I cut the board, uh, a 3 to 6 millimeter MDF or plywood board will do. Uh, again, I arrange the components on the board as planned before and then mark where to drill a few holes so that I can secure all the components with cable ties. I will often also use some hot glue together with the cable ties to make sure none of the uh, parts rattle or vibrate whilst the speaker is playing. You will also need a good quality soldering iron that can heat up to around 350 degrees Celsius and 1mm or 0.8mm solder wire. I use a combination of this cordless soldering iron or a desktop unit that has more control over heat settings. Try to use a soldering tip that is medium sized and not too fine or too big. The first option is to do a point to point wiring above the board. I start by first securing all the components to the board with cable ties. I am not using hot glue on this board, but you can put a dab of hot glue under each component before securing them with the cable ties. Component leads can be twisted together according to the circuit diagram. Once twisted together and you have double checked all your components, solder is applied to the joints like this. Trim excess leads with a wire snip. The second option is also point to point wiring but underneath the board. For this option you will need to drill additional holes in the board for the component leads to pass through. Once all the component leads are passed through and secured with cable ties, you can turn the board over and start to solder the leads together. Again, double check all your connections according to the circuit diagram. Trim any excess component leads with wire snips. Sometimes a component lead will be too short to reach and you will need to extend the lead with some speaker wire. You can also use the wire that you trim off the excess component leads. To determine the length of the wires going to the speaker drivers and power input or binding posts, decide where to put the crossover board in the enclosure and measure the length of the wires required for each purpose. I will then add maybe another 100 or 200 millimeters onto each length of wire. To connect the speaker and power wires, proceed as follows. Strip the ends of all the wires and twist all the ground wires together.
You can now cover or pre-tin all the wire ends in solder. The positive and negative ends of the drivers and the power input has specific places to go. Check the circuit diagram and determine where this is on the board. I use a sharpie or a pencil to mark these. T plus for the tweeter, W plus for the woofer and P plus for the power. The ground connection is marked with the letters G and D. Now you can solder the wires you have pre-tinned with solder to the components that you have identified and marked respectively on the board. Strip and pre-tin the other ends of the wires with solder. These ends will be soldered to the speaker terminals and the binding posts. Secure the crossover board to the inside of the enclosure. I use a combination of double-sided tape and a few screws. You can also permanently glue it down with two-part epoxy for a more secure bond. Once the crossover board is secured inside the enclosure, pull the wires through to the respective driver holes. Pre-tin the speaker terminals with solder and solder the wires to the speaker terminals. Make sure to get the polarity correct and check the circuit diagram. Screw the speaker in place and you are done. In my build plans, I do provide the circuit diagram and also the size of the board you will need and how to lay out the components and how to connect the component leads. It is all very clear and now that you know how to go about it, it should be a very straightforward task that anyone can do. Thank you all for watching and I trust that you have learned something useful. To support my channel and enjoy more upcoming content, please subscribe and like the video and ring the bell so that you'll be notified of upcoming videos. You can also support me on Patreon or YouTube memberships with the links below, where I provide extra and behind the scene content that you might enjoy. So go check it out. Until next time, adios.